61A, lecture number 35, announcements. Happy Earth Day, homework nine is due Friday, and everything else is just exams. Exams will be posted to final.cs61a.org, which is available now. It's a new application we've built because it seemed better than all the other alternatives out there. You might wonder why we don't use B-Courses or Gradescope. Both of these options have caused some problems in other courses, so we're trying something new. However, since we just developed this software, as a backup, there will be a PDF version of all exams, including the practice exam, with answer submission through a Google form. But this backup format is not recommended because it does not save your work as you go. Google Forms only save your work when you submit at the end. The good thing about Google Forms, they don't seem to crash under heavy load. The bad thing, they don't save your work. That's why we built our own thing, which does save your work as you go and hopefully won't crash. A demo exam is already posted. It's not a full length exam. It's not representative of the difficulty of the exam you're going to take. It counts for nothing. It's just there to show you some of the question formats in case you want to know what the exam format is going to be like. You do need to enter a password in order to view the exam, and here's the password. There will be a practice final exam. This is not yet posted. This practice final will be held on Friday. We will not have a lecture on Friday. Instead, we'll just have this practice final. It will start at 2.10 p.m. Pacific time. It will not be released until that time. Well, actually, the exam will be released to final.cs61a.org on Friday, but the password to open it up won't be released until 2.10 p.m. on Friday. Whether you get the questions right or not doesn't matter, but you might as well try. And assuming you've made an effort, you'll get three extra credit points just for taking the practice final. You do need to take it between 2.10 p.m. and 3 p.m. in order to receive these extra credit points, unless you're on a different continent, meaning not in North America, in which case, you can take it whenever you want. Also, if you have a course conflict, please let us know on the conflict form that's coming out today, and then you can get the extra credit points by taking it a little bit later. But unless you're actually excused because you're overseas or you have a course conflict, the only way to get these three extra credit points is to actually take the practice final on Friday during the class period. Then we'll actually have exams that count. Monday we'll have lecture up through mutable functions, but not including trees. Wednesday we'll have all of the content through midterm two. And Friday we'll have all of the content from the course with a focus on things after midterm two. All of these are going to be held during the regular class period to 10 p.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And we will have an alternate time for students on other continents. But unless you're on another continent or you have a class at the same time, you do need to take it during the regular slot. Later today, you should receive a conflict form so you can tell us about any conflicts that you have. But in general, everybody does need to take this exam in order to pass the course. Unless you've somehow already accumulated enough points to pass the course, in which case maybe you'll pass without taking the final, but that's pretty unusual. Most students will have to take at least some of these exams in order to pass. And here's the same announcement I had before, homework nine is due on Friday. Apparently it's so important that I have it twice. And finally, you can participate in the Scheme Recursive Art Contest. It's completely optional and entries are due the Monday of RRR week after all the exams are done. This will be the last announcements video for a while, but we will pick up lecture again during RRR week in order to talk about advanced features of Scheme. You've built a Scheme interpreter, that's pretty cool. But some students wonder, what's the point of Scheme? Why not just use Python? And the part of Scheme you've learned so far is actually quite similar to Python. But there are some advanced features that are particular to Scheme, including more efficient linear recursion, the ability to create new special forms, and lazy evaluation features that are kind of like generator functions, but don't require mutation. So these three features we'll talk about after the final exams are done during RRR week, if you want to keep going with the optional lecture series. Today's optional lecture isn't about Scheme at all. It's about the research area within computer science that I focus on, which is called natural language processing. In particular, we're going to focus on the structure of natural language sentences. And I'll show you that using what you've learned in 61A, you can get pretty far in this problem. 
but you do need recursion, you do need trees, and we'll even use some generator functions. Here we go.